Hello, everyone. So um, this talk is about uh, a, system, a tool that we have uh, designed and implemented, Pillarbox. It's related to protection of uh, security logs. Uh, this was done in collaboration with uh, Kevin Bowers, Catherine Hart, Ari Jules, uh, at RSA Labs uh, uh, some, um, sometime recently. I will start by motivating uh, um, the main uh, desi design decisions behind this uh, uh, tool. Advanced threats, or also known as uh, advanced persistent threats, are already a reality. Uh, we all know that in this audience, uh, the goal of a sophisticated attacker is to uh, exfiltrate data or tamper with data. Uh, typically, this data is owned by uh, an enterprise and corresponds to some critical uh, information. So we seek to protect against that. Uh, however, in doing that, um, there are some challenges. Uh, this is a new type of uh, attack vector that also employs social engineering um, some uh, zero-day malware, and uh, in general, it's a process that uh, it, it is not just, uh, you know, attack once and disappear. Typically, the attacker will go, will run low and s slow. So it is very hard to defend, sometimes even uh, impossible or very hard to, de to detect. And uh, here, this is a very, very, you know, simple attack, such attack uh, where um, using some social engineering, uh, say an employee uh, gets compromised, uh, the machine is infected by some virus, the attacker has a foothold in the system after some sophisticated step of uh, uh, series of uh, next steps. Uh, he's able to uh, perform some lateral movement uh, to reach the target and then exfiltrate some uh, uh, valuable piece of data. Of course, this is just a simplistic view. Uh, an AT uh, life cycle is more complicated. My point here is that it's not so much a one-step attack. It's more like a war game. Uh, you want, as a defender, to always be in a better position than the attacker. The attacker wants, at all times, to have an advantage over you. Um, this will become relevant when we'll talk about uh, protection of the defense intelligence that the system provides. Uh, some best practices in the industry today is, of course, to raise the bar. Uh, Try to prevent as much as possible such that these attacks or some steps in these attacks uh, cannot happen. Think of uh, strong authentication, for instance. But perhaps more promising or more realistic is the view that uh, the attack will happen anyway. So try to monitor your system and uh, learn, increase your visibility, uh, do some analysis, and when you detect, perform some action. Um, and uh, we are thinking about uh, uh, security information event management, management systems and uh, uh, the importance of those uh, today. So we're moving towards the in intelligence-based security where more or less we have those uh, agents installed in the infrastructure. These are these uh, little offices uh, there. I will generically refer to those as security uh, anal analytics uh, sources. Uh, you can think about any device in an enterprise that has been orchestrated with the ability to create logs and report them at the center. Uh, think of syslog or uh, antivirus agents or VPNs, anything. Uh, this is what we will call SaaS. Now, given those agents, uh, we start collecting data. This is our SIM server. And then we do some uh, nice processing. This is the analytics. And uh, hopefully, we report something useful to uh, Security Operations Center. And uh, there are many benefits for this approach. Uh, we have uh, increased visibility. We can collect data, correlate uh, uh, across different uh, uh, SaaS and uh, analyze at the hope that at the end of the day, we'll do some smart uh, decision making. This is the last slide. Uh, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of work currently uh, done on data analytics. Uh, the, the main steps here is, as I said, gather evidence from primary, various sources, some uh, resources, try to profile what seems to be normal in the system, and then when something is labeled as unusual or something that doesn't happen, it's in contrast with a, a normal profiling, then do your magic. This is AI uh, or whatever, data mining, uh, correlation and detect the, the, the anomalies. This is a well-studied uh, 
problem. It's a very complex and very challenging. This is not the focus here today. My point is that this can be only effective if the data over which you analyze is reliable. Is, uh, the data analysis is only as good as the data. And um, in view of the advanced threats, the attackers that become more and more sophisticated, this means that they will shift their uh, focus, not to just do their attack, exfiltrate, and try to evade your defense system, but now they will go after your defense system. So uh, the assumption here is that the attacker will first disarm what you have in place to collect data and do your analytics, and then try to do anything else. This means that in the case of security logs, uh, anything of these uh, things can, uh, can happen. The attacker may try to block the stream of uh, reported logs or um, employ log scrubbing malware to cover, to, 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 uh, cover the tracks, tamper with the host side uh, log generation software, etc. Importantly, he can also try to discover intelligence about the orchestration of the uh, SaaS system. Uh, for instance, by f uh, learning what are the alert rules. So, at a more technical uh, level, this is how we, view how we study this uh, problem. We abstract away the SaaS uh, as being a component uh, in a host machine, and on the server side we have uh, this uh, SIM system. As I said, there are many, many products right now, and uh, the SAS represents uh, any, any existing uh, uh, corresponding uh, uh, module that collects, uh, uh, that uh, generates alerts. And uh, these are being, uh, information flows through a network, and uh, to begin with, much of existing SAS transmission uh, uh, systems uh, use unreliable transmissions. So we can already have some data loss due to benign net network uh, uh, failures, which means that maybe a severe alert like this black one, uh, the alert number three, may go missing, uh, and you cannot detect that. Uh, even worse, now this system, as I uh, motivated earlier, can be the direct uh, target of an attacker at two levels, either at the NERCOD level, where the attacker may try to gain intelligence about the system or just block uh, uh, or uh, uh, you know, disrupt the alerting, or against the host itself, in which case he will try to tamper or um, uh, suppress or block some uh, alert transmissions and eventually disrupt the SAS functionality. Um, so this is how, uh, what's the starting point for the design of, uh, of our system, of our tool. Um, in, the, in this case, for instance, the, the, sorry, the attacker will try to, will manage to uh, make these alerts that uh, we're talking about uh, its own attack uh, to, to look, uh, you know, uh, usual alerts or uh, benign. So, Pillarbox is now a secure uh, alert relaying tool that essentially offers the abstraction of a secure tunnel between the host and the server machine. It's a protected channel. And uh, we draw the analogy, and actually we borrow this for our name, for the name of the tool, from what actually is the case in the UK. You know, the mailboxes are this pillar box, or this pillar, as they called. And uh, we draw the analogy there that everything you put there, the mail you put there, uh, if you assume the Royal uh, Mail service, will reach the destination. And at the same time, it's very opaque. You cannot really uh, look what is in there, or you cannot put your hand in to, to take it uh, back. So the features of the, of the tool is that uh, we ensure against uh, alert uh, suppression or tampering. This is the integrity. We conceal alerting activity. This is against the gaining of uh, intelligence by the attacker. Uh, this is an optional feature. Uh, it's an optional because uh, it adds some cost, some overhead. Um, we have the nice uh, property that alerts are transmitted uh, persistently, more than once. So we can even, uh, um, for instance, uh, tolerate benign uh, uh, failures in the network. As I said, uh, the tool is to com completely agnostic to what uh, concrete uh, SAS uh, instantiation we use. And what is really important, and in, my, in our view, the differentiating feature of this tool is that it operates in self-protection mode. This means that it operates and does well against an attacker that explicitly or directly 
um, attacks uh, uh, the, the SAS system and the and Pillarbox uh, module at the host itself. So we need to talk a little bit about uh, alerting. So here the assumption is that as we have some malware activity on the host, something meaningful will be recorded, like a privilege escalation. However, we need to realize that uh, these alerts are meaningful only until the point in time where the host is fully compromised by the attacker. After that point, we cannot hope to have anything meaningful information because uh, the attacker can simply tamper with this data. So we must assume that there is a non-zero critical window of high indicative alerts. This is our assumption, and this is how we partition time. We have the pre-compromise period, then the compromise against the host is, uh, uh, starts, uh, the SAS generates some meaningful alerts. This is the useful information we need to protect. There is the compromise in progress at some, uh, until some points where we have the complete host compromise, and then after which the post-compromise period is really relevant for our game here because the game is over. So our goal is to uh, gain this race condition between the malware and the, and the pillar box in our case so that we protect alerts in this critical window in self-protection mode, even when the attacker knows about Pillarbox, how it functions, and tries to uh, disrupt the, the uh, securing of the logs. So very quickly, I would like to mention an alternative uh, to Pillarbox. Uh, Pillarbox um, uh, does some uh, alerts, uh, uh, some buffering on the alerts. Uh, an alternative is to, as, long, as soon as you have some alert, to try to push it over the network, over the wire. I call it uh, uh, on the fly transmission, but uh, this is not uh, quite effective sometimes. Uh, it can be unreliable. Uh, uh, think of uh, your um, uh, personal laptop that you also use at work. When you go back home, you don't have this uh, uh, ability to you know, send uh, real time the alerts. Um, there are network attacks against the, the alerting, and uh, we actually have implemented one uh, such. Uh, uh, ARP-based uh, attack to demonstrate that it's almost trivial uh, for the attacker to um, block the transmission of alerts. Uh, as I said uh, trivially, uh, the attacker in this case can also uh, discover intelligence about the alerting by just monitoring the, uh, the outgoing uh, traffic. And sometimes we can also see that there is some delay uh, alerting, um, as we also demonstrate in, in our experiments. And on the other hand, uh, with our de design, we have persistence. Even if we um, have some uh, transmissions that uh, you know, do not make it to, to reach the collector, because of the redundancy that we have in the system, uh, most likely logs, every produced uh, alert will reach uh, the server. We have some uh, regularity or periodicity with which uh, we uh, transfer logs, and this uh, um, um, this uh, has the nice property that the, if, if there is any, anything in the, uh, any attack against the traffic, this will be detected. We have some stealth, meaning that the attacker will not uh, gain, uh, uh, based on alerting behavior, any information about how we have orchestrated our system. And also we make a lot, we put a lot of effort on the speed, such that we, uh, we, uh, we gain this uh, racing uh, uh, condition. So, we were actually able to perform uh, an attack um, in the case where we have uh, uh, reporting of alerts, alerts through a network switch. Uh, we performed a man-in-the-middle attack against the switch uh, using uh, EtherCAP tool and IRP spoofing. And again, essentially, we were able to intercept any log, and the attacker could do anything, tamper with, uh, um, with the logs and... Uh, uh, or just block some of them, such that the server doesn't get to, to see the, what really is happening. Uh, in the next uh, few slides, I will describe to you uh, in a bottom-up uh, fashion what are the main designs, uh, design decisions that we, we had for um, uh, Pillarbox and how we achieved the properties. So as soon as uh, a, lo uh, a log or alert is generated, in Pillarbox it is signed and encrypted and uh, it is uh, uh, added in a buffer. So 
This means that say that we have this attack in progress, this is the first alert, this is signed and encrypted and buffered in this uh, box, the buffer, and we use a key that evolves over time in a forward secure way, meaning that now the next one that is being uh, uh, generated is signed by and encrypted by a different key and so on and so forth until sometime where periodically or on demand these logs uh, are sent to the server. Uh, with this one, and of course the server uh, goes through the, um, the chain of uh, keys and gets, uh, uh, de decrypts and uh, verifies that everything is uh, intact. This gives us trivial integrity and confidentiality, and of course forward security is pr probably something that we are all familiar with, but the idea is to use uh, one way uh, hashing uh, or mapping so that uh, the first initial key S1 is mapped to S2, and then we delete uh, previous keys such that when we reach, uh, you know, say the kth uh, uh, position in this chain and have cost, a host compromise, anything that has been secured uh, with previous keys cannot really be attacked by the attacker. The next step in our bottom-up uh, design will be to be more redundant in our transmissions, meaning that we will not empty the buffer, but we retransmit everything that we have. So this means that uh, in the next step of the attack where we have a second alert, the first one keeps uh, being transmitted to the server, and so on and so forth. So we, we add some redundancy in the system, and this gives us persistent persistence. Even if we have some uh, network problems, benign uh, network problems, we guarantee that a given alert is more likely to be uh, received by the server. Then we will make the transmissions a little bit more uh, uh, systematic, and uh, we operate as before, but now transmissions are periodic. And if a buffer that is expected of, you know, at a certain uh, uh, clock tick is not uh, um, uh, received, then we have a new special alert, the heartbeat alert. This means that, uh, say that, uh, uh, you know, a transmission is intercepted by an attacker, that there's a timeout there and we have this special heartbeat alert, and this gives us uh, failure detection and traffic concealment. Um, the first one means that uh, there is an mi imposed minimum frequency by which we expect new logs, even if they are the same, and if this is uh, not uh, observed, then we know that something is wrong. The other is uh, just uh, by uh, observing the network traffic, the attacker is not able to gain intelligence about what is being transmitted. The final uh, step is that uh, even these uh, periodic uh, buffer transfers now are uh, further encrypted. And uh, not only that, but now our buffer is restricted to have a fixed size, and uh, this means that uh, as it being, it's being filled, we're uh, forced to override previous uh, messages, and we do that in a route robin uh, fashion. Before transmission, the entire content buffers are re-encrypted at a higher level. This means that if this is the current index in our uh, box, uh, we have the first log being secured, the, we have uh, the attack uh, progressing, we have more of these uh, um, logs. At some point in time, we reach the heartbeat, the entire buffer content is encrypted, is sent to the server, and we continue in the, in the, in the same uh, fashion. Now we have another period, encryption of the entire uh, contents of the buffer, and so on and so forth. Okay, so uh, this gives us the uh, extra property of stealth, which is beyond confidentiality. Now we completely um, um, protect any information related to the state of the uh, SAS system of, or pillar works at the host side. The adversary do not even know how many alerts his attack has been uh, uh, generated, or even an alert was ever generated. Why? Because now we have a fixed size uh, buffer, so uh, just observing the length of transmissions doesn't give you anything, and we also have this uh, extra layer of encryption. So, moving uh, towards the implementation of our tool, uh, this is the general pillar box architecture, and um, the alerter in our case is uh, the SAS system, Buffer is what implements uh, the buffer. It's a data structure with some crypto. 
we have a transmitter who periodically will get the, bu the buffer contents and uh, send them over uh, the network. Uh, we don't assume anything about the, about the type of uh, network transmission, even UDP, unprotected UDP can, uh, can be used. At the, receiver, uh, at the server side, we have the receiver getting what is being sent, and uh, the decryptor is the counterpart of buffer where crypto is applied in reverse order to get back uh, uh, the contents. And these are all uh, delivered to what we call gap che checker. This is the module where, which tries to put everything in order because we may have some buffers that come out of order or some buffers do not make it at all. This is the, uh, the guy who tries to put everything in order and see if there are any gaps in the sequence of keys. And this corresponds to so, um, very quickly in the last five minutes, I would like to describe the, uh, some results that we got after implementation. These are the details uh, uh, behind our implementation. We use syslog and some extension uh, of it, uh, Snort, uh, to, uh, to get uh, access to some uh, logs. Um, and um, we use authenticated encryption to implement the crypto, uh, AX uh, in, uh, mode encryption, and the forward secure pseudo random generator was just a hash chain. Although one can be more um, clever, uh, such that uh, you have uh, um, more efficient uh, you know, searching in this uh, chain. So uh, this is uh, just an indication that uh, it makes sense to buffer uh, versus just on the fly alerting. Uh, sometimes we observe that, uh, or most of the times we observe that uh, it is just faster to locally protect rather, rather than just uh, sending it uh, uh, over the network. Uh, related to the race condition, these are first results um, on specific type of attacks that the attacker can do. Here we assume that the attacker is already in a position to, to run something at the root level. Okay? He has already compromised uh, the, um, uh, the host and is able to uh, disrupt the execution of uh, pillar books. And he can do it by, uh, by attacking either the uh, pillar box, the buffer itself, or the syslog component who generates the alerts, or even what we use in between for the communication between our system and SAS, which is a, a named pipe. So uh, the attacker will try to perform a corresponding kill command for any of these three uh, processes. And uh, what is nice to report is that we have uh, a success rate that we win the race against the attacker in most of the cases well, with only failure 1%. Uh, note that in this case, the alert itself is the pseudo command, kill command that the attacker um, executes. So for instance, when uh, he goes against the pillar box, uh, uh, we, the, the message, this alert will be secured in uh, four milliseconds, uh, and uh, uh, we, we will have another, th an average, another three milliseconds to spare before the pillar box process is killed. And this is independent of uh, the load. Uh, we have some 4% failure, uh, failure rate when uh, uh, the CPU load is at this 20% uh, uh, rate, which uh, we don't have a good explanation why. Surprisingly, if the CPU goes higher than that, the failure rate goes down. Um, uh, for the pipe, if the attacker goes against the pipe, once again, we observe that the alert message will go through the pipe and be uh, grabbed by the pillar box leaving some uh, milliseconds to spare. Same thing with syslog. So we see that uh, uh, we, are, we are winning this uh, race. In, uh, another extra feature is that we can actually, once we have an, a, a rule that is being um, executed, we can delete it so that the attacker doesn't have access to the rules uh, that uh, created the alerts. This is a, a complement of stealth. And we can do that faster than the uh, attacker can read the log file. So, uh, this is the ideal ordering of events that we would like to happen. The blue ones correspond to what pillar box does as a defense. Detect, uh, the SAS detects and uh, logs something, the pillar box secures it, etc., etc. And uh, the red part is what the attacker does once he has full access to the, to the host machine. And uh, in a more asynchronous setting, uh, uh, we were able to uh, simulate an attack, to perform an attack uh, using some SSH uh, exploit where the attacker gains cell access and then uh, privilege ex escalation to try to attack pillar box. And this is the corresponding uh, uh, ordering of the events, uh, average and, uh, numbers and uh, standard uh, deviation. And we see that uh, we essentially are able to confirm the ideal ordering. Thank you.
So uh, I'm running out of time. So um, we saw that we had only a 7% overhead over regular syslog or snort, which is good. Uh, the, we, we gain security at, uh, at a relatively low um, a cost. And uh, this is also important. We were able to parameterize and set, configure the pillar box uh, ideally in our enterprise environment by uh, estimating how many alerts typically are being generated and fixing the system such that it can tolerate the highest possible in a large enterprise uh, you know, uh, alert generation rate. So everything uh, works in our favor, efficiency and uh, correctness. Our buffer is able to consume what he needs to consume. This is our last uh, slide here. In summary, we have a tool that uh, is general purpose and uh, implements reliable alert uh, uh, relaying. Um, they, on the technical side, buffering is better. We use forward uh, security. We are not the first one to use forward security, very important. There are many existing works on forward security logging. What differentiates this work is the, the fact that we apply this in a self-protecting mode. And the features are, as I said, self-protection. Even attacks against pillar box are tolerated, where the pillar box is able to secure those alert methods that was responsible for uh, the killing of pillar box. And uh, we have integrity, stealth, and persistence. I think this is important for securing the chain of custody in, uh, in uh, SIM systems today. Uh, thank you, and I'm happy to answer questions. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry if this is, uh, I'm here, so I'm sorry if Hi. this is a very naive question, but uh, at the very first RAID conference, uh, so 17 years ago, Bruce Schneier presented forward secure logging for intrusion detection, and if you just do what he did, and you have a reliable transport protocol, TCP for instance, and you create alerts regularly so that you have the stealthiness property, I really don't see what pillar box brings on the table. So what did I miss? That's actually a great question. Thanks for asking that. This is not only your question, but the question of, I guess, many reviewers uh, uh, recently. Um, this is true. I say that I don't have a related work uh, you know, slide here. Uh, Forward secure logging is a well-known and studied uh, um, concept and indeed can be applied uh, uh, even today. But as I hopefully you know, demonstrated, it doesn't provide, with, with only this feature, you don't get what uh, we get with pillar blocks. For instance, stealth, everything that is related to uh, avoiding leaking any information about your alert behavior to an attacker is protected. No, you just have to create regularly every x milliseconds an alert and nothing will leak. This is a, this is a very, very standard way of doing on channels that can be spied by people, there, there you create noise, and then... Uh, there are other details related to the uh, constant size buffer, the fact that logs are not closed until uh, uh, later. Um, uh, there are some details that we also explain in the paper, demonstrating that uh, just, just applying what is currently known uh, will not uh, give us the properties that we get. I don't believe that uh, uh, self-protection was, uh, first of all, it was definitely not studied, and uh, it would not be supported by just uh, applying what uh, exists in the literature. Okay, thanks. I guess I'm missing something. Um, so you very much have this race condition, as you correctly mentioned, um, and you measured it right now against some sudo kill command, um, which I think from a attacker pr perspective is not exactly smart to kill the process because then you would immediately see the gap that you would monitor on the server side, right? Um, so if you consider another scenario, for example, what I would do as an attacker, try to steal the key material, which is used to sign um, and encrypt the commands, or the, the, the log commands, um, would that be different in terms of the race condition? Uh, to be honest, I don't think that we have uh, tried this one. Um, if I understand your version of attack, instead of trying to kill pillar box, just try to read the corresponding ready-to-be-used key. Yeah, exactly. Such that uh, even, okay. 
Yeah, uh, I'm not sure if this will uh, uh, be in favor of the attacker. I, I really cannot comment on that. Um, I, I'm assuming that the, in our study, uh, this was perhaps tested and uh, we figured out that it's, uh, it's slower. But I think it's a good uh, comment. Because what you do right now is actually spawn a new process, which is a pretty slow process on Linux. So, um, Excuse me? You, you spawn a new process right now with the sudo command, and this is probably a bit slower than you would do some very smart, specific attack, Re like which is faster. Yeah. So I wonder what the general race condition um, outcome will be if you have other attacks. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, in, in this aspect, we, we could not have something that is you know, provably secure to, to really formalize what we mean by self-protection. This is more like an engineering uh, type of uh, 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 feature, and we did our best, but I, I guess uh, this is a good point that maybe there are other uh, you know, fast, if not faster, uh, ways for the attacker to try to disrupt the, uh, you know, the securing of logs. Indeed. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Okay, then thank you a lot. Thank you.